Yo, hey guys, Smallmouth Crush, this is part two in the uh, how I store and organize my tackle videos. Uh, part one, I talked about how I manage and store everything in my house, in the garage, in the uh, tackle room. And so if you're interested in checking that out, if you haven't, you can take a look in the description after this video and watch that. I go through really in-depth how I label and mark and organize everything so I can be as efficient as possible while out on the water. This video is all about storing the equipment in my bass boat and how I try to keep things as organized as possible. We're going to get into it. That's all coming up. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how I organize and maintain everything in the actual bass boat itself. Of course, I do carry a lot of stuff in the truck and I have a system in place. So I have a product made by Deck that has a drawer system and I utilize that quite a bit for any spare tackle that I'm going to have. I keep everything in bags and containers in there and I know exactly where everything is. I have two really giant blue uh, hard containers that I can put in there, blue topped uh, storage systems where I put all the baits that I'm going to use and I kind of break it up in between largemouth baits and smallmouth baits although a lot of times when I'm traveling for a smallmouth tournament I'll actually have to bring a few more uh, soft plastics and things like that with me so I'll put those in bigger bends on top of that but it's a perfect system for me it, it works great it allows me to stay really organized alright so the boat is empty I'm gonna dump everything in here and show you guys how I have it set up so the first thing you'll notice when I open up the big main compartment it's, there's a lot of room here in this Camus. This is a CX-21. And I have a product in here made by Amp Marine, A-M-P-D Marine. And they make systems for all different kinds of boats. Doesn't matter what brand, but, the, but I took out the factory stocked trays and, and systems that they had to make something a little bit more customizable and you can see I'm able to put my boxes line them up in here nothing's gonna move around we have some side storage as well you can see I I took some of the dividers out to make more room for things and you really can just customize it for your setup so when I take things out of the boat and in the truck or back home in the garage I just like to use these plastic storage bins for all the big bulk of things that way they're not sliding around I keep everything right here I can just lift it in the boat and pop it in so really I customize this based on where I'm fishing whether it be for smallmouth or largemouth uh, I'm getting ready to fish on the Chesapeake Bay which is all predominantly largemouth and so I'm gonna use this system here to put a lot of things like deep cranks yeah I could use a deep crank will I Highly unlikely. I mean, there's there's certain situations, but this time of year, I mean, I want to have them in the boat, but I'm not going to need them. So I'm going to just throw those in the far back and just work my way down with baits and, and tackle that I need the most right here. So you'll notice I have different crank baits in here. I have some metal flat sides, square bills, Rapala, jerk baits, lipless my footballs, my flipping jigs, swim jigs, right in here. Now in the back of the boat is where I'm going to carry all my plastic. So same deal, a little storage container for all these other uh, storage systems, so your spare line. We talked a lot about how I organized this in the previous video, but everything I need is at my fingertips, right here, including my go-to box. These are all terminal tackle, jig heads, hooks, things that I'm going to probably use daily and just want to have access to. So now that we have everything in, you can just see how efficient this is. Chatter baits back there, these spro boxes fit nicely in here. Those are all my terminal hooks right there. My drop shot, my tube heads go in there. I got my tungsten weight right here, so everything I need, some plastics, depending on what type of situation I'm going to incur, I'll be able to put those extra plastics that I really can't put in a 3700 box right there. Of course here we have all the miscellaneous items, 
your swim bait hooks, jig heads. Back there is anything that has a jig head attached to it is in that. And if you watch the, the first video, which I really encourage you to if you haven't, if you just look, everything is labeled, right? So everything I need is right there, labeled and ready to go. And in this compartment, this is gonna be like my go-to plastics that I'm gonna use a lot. So everything I feel like this time of year I'm gonna be using, uh, they're all right here. I got scent, Procure scent on them. They're marinating. This is just all my go-to stuff for the day. Like the majority of the plastics I'm gonna be using are found right here. And so it's a little bit easier if guys are fishing up here, I don't have to ask them, hey, lids up. They can just come in, I can just come in here and grab the baits. Now I put this big Z-Man box. This has every Z-Man plastic made, practically, that I use anyways. And um, again, everything's bagged and labeled. I know exactly what I have in here. Now because I guide quite a bit, Normally this cooler here is, is used for the clients and I'll have my own little cooler with a lunch uh, with some ice in it. And so I'm gonna use this storage system for that. So I'll basically take this tray out and then I can put my lunch in there. Or if I'm fishing a big smallmouth tournament offshore in the middle of the summer, this'll be where I can put you know, another four or five bags of ice to store throughout the day in there as well. And normally I would be able to just, just drop that Z-Man container in there. But since I'm gonna be guiding a lot, I'm just gonna set the Z-Man right here. That way I have it. There's still plenty of room in here. But I may need to find a little bit better solution because I'm trying to keep compartments open too. I'm trying to keep one in the very back open uh, for camera gear and things like that. And so this so far seems to be the best set up for me. Where was this product years ago? Anytime you're around a dock, you're waiting to take off or you're weighing your fish or just putting the boat on and off the trailer or docking your boat, the dock rod is definitely something you're gonna want. So many years I've had scratches in the gel and the rub rail, just nicks and dings, whether it be a metal dock, a wood dock, it doesn't matter. Look how simple these are. I got two of them, one in the front, one in the back. The ropes will be swinging, it'd be rubbing up against this. This thing will not rub. This will not rub. This is this is crazy. Blows my mind right now. Wow. I can't even push it up against the dock if I wanted to. Simple. Hey, the dock rod's the deal. Anglerconcepts.com. You can use my code smallmouthcrush10 to help save you some money. But this thing is seriously legit, and I wish I knew about these years ago. And then right here, this drawer is pretty cool. I have it set up again. That system from Amp Marine, I can put all my dies in here. So everything I need is ready to go. I've got some scent. Then I also keep some tools in here, my super glue, fingernail polish, markers. My Procure is in here as well. All my scent, so just a nice little box. I'm also gonna keep my scale right here. And we'll throw in a little towel if needed. And while we're here too, and I'll try to put a link in the description of this, uh, this video as well. I got this nice little bag here because in my storage container, I really wanted to prevent some of this stuff from banging around. So I actually have my pole that I use uh, for my filming. And then also the butt seat poles will go in this bag because that's metal. I don't want that banging around in these drawers. So I just keep it in this nice, uh, nice bag here. It was fairly inexpensive and that at least will protect the inside. You can put two butt seats in here, whatever you need. Okay, if we head on over to the back of the boat, this storage container right behind me is most of my plastics. So, Senkos, special color Senkos for the bay, small swim baits, finesse worms, drop shot worms, flipping tubes, brush hogs, crazy flapper, speed craws, flipping, hula, grubs, 
TRJ's hogs and jig trailers. Again, I use Ant Marine. They put a device down in here that's gonna keep your boxes from falling all over the place. Look at how slick that is. That thing is awesome. Maybe you guys are interested in my drop shot worms for largemouth. Here they are, we open it up. And these are pretty much all I'm gonna throw this time of year. There you go. Nest worms. Well, that's not really finesse, but that's definitely a uh, tidal water bait right there. So we open up this compartment behind the passenger seat. It's empty, right? So this will be for my co-angler stuff. This will be for my clients, the people I'm guiding, if they have extra stuff, clothes, things like that, that can fit in here. And so I really try to keep one compartment always open. And when I'm by myself, you know, it comes in handy too if I have a few extra things I want to throw in there. But really, this whole setup is, is fairly well organized now that I have everything in place. I do have this middle compartment that I'll show you. And in this middle compartment is just the stuff that I might need on a regular basis. So of course, uh, a rag. I got these uh, fish monkey gloves when I'm catching a couple hundred smallmouth a day and I don't have to beat up my delicate fingers. I got this little floaty device here I can put on my cell phone. I've had a few instances on the boat where phones got dropped in the water so if I'm feeling like it I can put that tether on my phone. I got some, uh, some, stuff, some, some stuff to help the fish in the live well. Some uh, ointment for my fingers, right? A marker, I don't know. All kinds of stuff in there. So in here I have all my licenses that I'll need. I have them all labeled, marked, my insurance cards. Everything is in here, so if I get stopped, I can just read, depending on what state I'm in. Okay, I'm in New York. Grab the New York license, they can be on their way. A little medicine, a lot of bandages, things like that in here. Just in case, this little deal here is all my uh, all my SD cards. Oh shoot, just dropped one. Dang it. Where'd it go, bro? There it is. So all my SD cards go in here. Thermometer, I was just trying to uh, make sure my graphs were reading the right temperature. Procure makes some badass hand and lure soap. So just to clean some scent off your hands if you're worried about that. Just a nice little thing to have. Vinegar and water for my screens, just in a little spray bottle. That's what that cloth is for. And then I'm also, uh, I just use this to calculate the, uh, make sure my depth was correct on my units too. So this is a nice little storage compartment here. Then I do have a little glove compartment over here, which is handy. Pretty much everything I need every day when I'm out on the water. So I have my power pull remotes, my trolling motor remote, lip stuff, my organic sunscreen, very important. I don't think the sun causes cancer. I think we've been lied to, that's a whole nother topic. But I believe that today's sunscreen has some nasty chemicals in it, and so I do like to use a natural sunscreen. And this is for protection from the sun, because yes, you will get burnt, you will get red, and that'll help. But I don't know, I'm, the verdict's still out. Do some research before you start bashing me in the comments. <laughs> All right, there's my Travis's public health announcement for the day. A lot of it, listen, I'm serious about that sunscreen stuff. A lot of it's about proper nutrition, not eating foods that cause inflammation, and making sure, like proper nutrition, like properly nutrifying your body with all essential vitamins and minerals, okay? And drinking water. The sun is not your enemy. Vitamin D, you need vitamin D. You'll die without it. I promise you, stop using those, those cheap, uh, you know, gas station Walmart sunscreens and spraying that stuff all over you. It's nasty.
It's nasty. All right, we got off topic a little bit. Let's get back to it. Guys, this is how I set up my boat. This is how I arrange everything. All right, I'm gonna give you guys a bonus tip. This thing is freaking amazing. It's the Milwaukee cordless, check it out, battery operated vacuum. I love this because after a guide trip, I can just come on over here. Look at this. After a guide trip, turn it on, go to town, clean up your boat. I mean, everybody needs one of these things. Amazing. I'll put a link down below. Okay, real quick, I should show you the back compartment too. So we open up the back and you'll notice I have more storage stuff. So these are actually waterproof shoes in case I get stuck in muck or I gotta jump in the water. I ain't gotta put bare feet to uh, whatever the heck's under the water, right? Comes in handy, believe it or not. In this bag I have, uh, this is just a spotlight, okay? If I'm heading to a tournament in the morning at a different launch and I just want a spotlight to help me, that comes in handy. I got my jumper, my marine radio, and this waterproof case back here. Um, my dock rods, you guys have seen me make a video about that. Those things are awesome. They work great when the dock is at the level of your boat. So a floating dock or a body of water where the dock's right there. If it's not, what I have here, I have these bumpers that I bought. And let me show you these bumpers because these things are pretty cool. So there's gonna be times when I can't use that dock rod in there. I'm gonna use these. These are uh, Akua, A-K-U-A boat fenders. I picked them up the other day and I'm like, dang, this is perfect. So suction cup, suction cup down here. And they're just gonna keep your boat from rubbing up against stuff. You can tie it up to your cleat. A Lot more efficient than those big plastic air filled fenders that they sell. So I even put my tools in a bag like this with a zipper. And then I put a cooler in here. You can see I actually have it bungee cord down and strapped down. So if you open it up, this just allows me to have some extra stuff that I may need. Uh, so my face mask is in here. Here I got batteries, cigarette lighters, jumper cables. A, a waterproof notebook and pad and pen. Got my battery tester, spare prop, fillet knife in case I catch some walleyes, all kinds of stuff in this box. My flares. So it's just a handy little deal that I had to add because there really wasn't no protection. I don't want stuff just bouncing around, so I just put a cooler I can keep all my tools and everything right in there and I think this will work I just zip it up when I'm done I take my strap and I take my bungee and I just bungee it to it it's not gonna move around those are secure pretty good down there simple and real quick while we're at the back of the truck, I have things organized in here as well. I have this little uh, device here that's got different dividers. So all my rags and towels go in one. Here I have, uh, I mean, a little bit of everything. Got extra rags, WD-40, plastic gloves, some primer, touch up the uh, skeg, you know what I mean? Some spray paint, electric cleaner. I got my water and vinegar, all my boat cleaning materials back in there, extra garbage bags, towels, you name it, we got it in here. And then this device here just keeps some extra clothes, boots, things of water. So it's a nice little compact little deal back here to keep everything uh, organized in the back of the truck. Hey, the goal is to help you guys become more organized. I feel very well organized and efficient the way this is set up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Watch part one if you haven't seen part one. That's going to give you a little more detail on how I got to this point. And as always, until next time, we'll see you guys on the water. Hello, it's Smallmouth Crush. I want to let you know about a company I'm really excited about, Great Lakes Finesse. Whether it be highly pressured waters, clear bodies of water, doesn't matter if it's smallmouth, largemouth, spotted bass, they have a great lineup of sneaky, 
finesse baits, whether it be the snack craw, the drop worm, or this flat cat. What the heck is a flat cat? Hey, you guys know I love finesse fishing and catching giant smallmouth. So it was a natural fit when Great Lakes Finesse approached me to design a smallmouth crush approved bait. And this bait particular, the drop minnow, it's 2.75 inches. It has some amazing action. Whether you're net rigging it, you're using a drop shot, or a technique I call hanging a minnow, Demiki rigging. Anytime you're fishing for suspended fish with a jig head, Pair these two together, you're going to be able to catch those fish. It's an amazing technique. So the drop minnow comes in a variety of different colors. Of course, we got some meltdown or your chartreuse. We have a lot of natural colors as well. We have your whites, your smoke purples, your green pumpkin, green pumpkin purple. Whatever the case may be, I think we really hit a home run when it comes to the colors that are available with this bait. So I really feel like this bait is perfectly streamlined. It's very compact. In fact, I'm sure we're playing some underwater video. You can just see the action of this bait when it's actually in the underwater environment. So, hey, Great Lakes Finesse not only makes some great soft plastics, they do have some terminal tackle as well available. Head on over to greatlakesfinesse.com. Use my code SMALLMOUTHCRUSH15, and you're going to save 15% off your order over at greatlakesfinesse.com. And as always, we'll see you on the water with Great Lakes Finesse.